Hello, it's a lovely, lovely good evening from here in Chile and hope that each one of you as always are absolutely, absolutely fine and we always pray for your good health and for your well-beingness. So, hoping that during these times of coronavirus, each one of you are what we call are absolutely safe and in fine health. On such note, we start today's this particular session and uh, this happens to be pretty what we call strong accounting standard as you can see. Uh, the title being flashed on your screens, so India is one, and it of course happens to deal with presentation of financial statements. <clears throat> Pretty strong standard, as I've already told you. The reason is very, very simple because it sets out the guidelines as far as preparation of the financials are concerned. So, as a professional, you need to have a very good idea and a very thorough idea regarding this particular standard. Correct? And we will see that uh, this particular standard actually uh, basically deals with the general purpose financial statements just to ensure that the comparability both with the equities financial statement of the previous period and of course the financial statements of the other en entities can be what we call compared. So that is the basic idea that an entity should prepare the presentation, should what we call prepare the financial in such a manner so that the comparability both with equities past performances and the what we call comparability with the other entities performances can be what we call jam. Besides we shall also see as far as this particular standard is concerned, this particular standard of course applies to every sort of what we call entity. Besides that. It also includes the such entities which prepare what we call consolidated financial statement of course as per India's 110 and besides if a particular entity happens to prepare the separate financial statements then also this particular standard is mandatory so on such count we start this particular standard as usual so even though more or less it happens to be pretty theoretical standard but we have a habit of writing each and every word at least we are going to discuss each and every facet i've already told you it happens to be pretty long standard so you need to actually gird up your line have you heard of this particular phrase that means you should be now absolutely ready actually this particular phrase is gird up your line is used so often in what we call defense arena that being military what we call field but anyway so we here and even uh, doing this particular standard to be very honest with you is nothing sort of a military exercise correct so be ready on such count we start this particular standard as we normally do we start with the objective so point number one and I need not require to tell you that it is a makeshift arrangement time and again I have been telling and you must have by now actually noticed and become familiar with respect to that so on such count we start now objective objective I have just told you but it's in spite of that objective objective of the standard just a moment ago I told you is to ensure correct the basic idea of the standard because the standard basically prescribes the basis for the presentation of general purpose financial statement so that as I said to ensure the comparability both with the equities what we call past performances and what we call with the financial statements of the other entity so we write here in this particular case standard prescribes standard prescribes the basis prescribes the basis as I said for the presentation of general purpose financial statement prescribes the basis for general purpose GP general purpose financial statement so often we are going to use this particular word during the what we call entire length and breadth of this particular what we call a standard so basically standard prescribes as I said <coughs> what we call some basis for the general purpose statement to ensure to ensure what to ensure comparability comparability of entities financial statement with the past performances correct comparability the comparability of entities
entities financial statements of previous year and and as i said actually in the screen we have to settle out the things that's the reason actually in the initial stages you will find me moving a bit slow because i have already told you it's not a professional studio so we need to we accept in the opening stages itself that on technical count we might be uh, what we call lacking a wee bit but uh, time and again i also keep on saying that ultimately we are more concerned with the contents and on that count we shall leave as always uh, i tell no stone unturned correct so previous year and uh, with the financial statements of the other entity with the financial statements of other entities other entities so this is the objective after having a look over the objective the next part of course is to <coughs> see the, the applicability portion correct and uh, as far as scope is concerned as we call it i have already told you this standard is applicable to applicable to applicable to all entities all types of entities even to entities even to entities as i said which are preparing consolidated financial statement even to entities that are preparing or that prepare consolidated financial statements cfs consolidated financial statements i have written as per india 110 as per indias 110 you are very well familiar with this and similarly as a moment ago i also said that this particular what we call standard also deals with the entities uh, who are supposed to prepare what we call separate financial statement and even to entities that are supposed to prepare <coughs> suppose to prepare supposed to prepare separate financial statements correct separate financial statement lots of short words i am going to uh, use short forms in fact i am going to use so you have to be bit careful in this regard correct and uh, after having a look over these aspect you also because since we have uh, now discussing we have started discussing scope so just for the knowledge sake you also need to understand that this particular standard will not apply to interim financial statements correct so i will write here however however this is standard however this is standard does not apply to does not apply to interim financial reporting interim financial reporting so if the entity would prepare interim financial reports then it need to it need not require to what we call adopt this particular standard correct 
so these are the things first of all the basis which uh, upon which actually we are going to hold down our discussion so after having a look over the fact what exactly is the scope and what exactly is the what we call objective so now we are in a position also to discuss some other aspects we will see the standard later on it speaks about what we call purpose of the financial statement in fact to be very honest with you para 9 deals with it <clears throat> so we come down to purpose of the financial statement this is third point in our discussion or i will make it third and i will make it fourth correct purpose of the financial statement at this level to be very honest with you i need not require to actually let you know what exactly the purpose of financial statements so purpose of financial statements please take care of this particular fact fs stands for financial statements quite obviously financial statements are structured representation of the financial position and the what we call financial performance of an entity correct the objective of the financial statement is to provide the information about the financial position and about the financial performance and about the cash flow of the entity as normally we are very well aware of especially to the wide range of what we call users whosoever are what we call having a sort of interest in our concern correct so standard as far as purpose of financial statement is concerned in nutshell we can say the purpose of the financial statement basically is to what we call provide information about the entity's assets liability equity income and expense as we'll see later on correct and besides the contribution by the owners and the distribution to the owners as we know the owners actually contribute to the entity what capital and what entity distributes to them entity distributes to them what we call dividend or interest also correct so purpose of the financial statement as far as purpose of the financial statement i have already told you purpose of the financial statement of course is to what we call have a sort of what we call look on the financial position financial performance and the cash flow correct so purpose of the financial statement basic is to provide information provide information with respect to what a assets these are normal common what we call things which as a student of commerce each one of us are absolutely well aware of b liabilities then equity of course income and expense income and expense income and expense and as i said a moment ago company should also provide information with respect to what we call contributions how much has been contributed by the owners contributions by owners and distribution to owners how much has been distributed to the owners distribution to owners so that is basically is the purpose of the financial statement but why this information we are giving because the basic idea or the basic objective of the financial statement as i as said a moment ago is to what we call uh, give information regarding the financial position regarding the what we call financial performance and of course regarding the cash flow correct so these are the things oh, and to meet these objectives actually we need to what we call give information Uh, with respect to all these things i told you basic purpose of the let me take the red pen basic purpose of the financial statement is what basic purpose of the financial statement as i said or objective which you each one of you know very well is to give information regarding the financial position
financial performance. Financial performance. And uh, cash flows, cash flows, that is cash flow statement. So basic objective of the financial statement is to present information with respect to the financial position, with respect to financial performance and with respect to cash flows. And in order to meet these objectives, it becomes what we call the basic idea and purpose of the financial statement uh, to provide information regarding all these things so that uh, the users can actually draw out what we call the conclusion regarding all these things. Is it clear to you or not? So once we have become deft with this particular what we call idea, now next we will move over to another significant part. Now, as a student of commerce, we also need to know, in fact, as a student of commerce, we need to know, but we need to know because standard has given all these things. So to be very honest with you, not only as a student of commerce, we need to know, but the next point in the what we call, uh, I will keep this sheet now over here, correct? So the standard next actually talks about the complete set of what we call financial statement. What exactly the complete set of financial statement at this level, in fact, para 10 actually has given this particular information. The complete set of financial statement, especially under India's, you need to know that a balance sheet, it comprises of a balance sheet, a statement of profit and loss account, of course, of the period, and a statement of changes in what we call equity for the period, that's something new because in the existing accounting standards, as far as complete set of what we call financial statements are concerned, a statement of equity is not there. So under, under what we call India's, it is there. So besides that, a statement of cash flow and of course notes, which is comprising a summary of your significant accounting policy, then only we say that it is a complete set of what we call financial statement. So this is a fifth point, I think so. So complete set of financial, complete, just let me fix up the sheets in the right position. Actually, this is the only area of trouble which we face here in this makeshift arrangement. Complete set, and it is very difficult to write also, and I'm very habitual of writing a lot complete set of financial statements some of you if you want to write i think it is para 10 of the standard correct so as far as complete set of financial statement is concerned it comprises of balance sheet at the end of the period please write that also then a statement of profit and loss account for the period for the period balance sheet at the end a statement of profit and loss account for the period beside a statement of changes in equity for the period a statement of changes in equity for the period correct equity i will write and henceforth in for writing statement of changes in equity i would use s o c e and it's a legal short form correct it is widely used so no problem in this case it is legally accepted acronym for statement of changes in equity d statement of changes in cash flow for the period statement of changes in cash flow for the period besides notes of course whenever we say notes your notes basically comprises of summary of all the what we call significant accounting policies and significant explanations of course because sometimes the financial items in the financials fail to deliver the exact information in detail so at a time actually we need what we call notes correct 
So this is what statement says regarding regarding the complete set of financial statement. Further, standard in AS1 also states what single statement of profit and loss account. Now, what is this single statement of profit and loss account? It is nothing. Single statement. of profit and loss actually as far as international scene is concerned nowadays in many countries PNL is prepared uh, separately and one is PNL and other is other comprehensive income both are actually basically profit and loss account correct but regarding these you will learn in detail in the upcoming standards no doubt about it but right at this particular moment it is sufficient to say that profit and loss account basically international accounting standard states that should be prepared separately profit and loss account should be prepared separately other comprehensive income should be prepared separately however in the as1 uh, has suggested that uh, you should prepare only single profit and loss account but that should be divided into two parts the upper part is basically pnl and the lower part basically is your other comprehensive income so entity will present with equal prominence of all the financial statements in a complete set of what we call financial uh, statement and entity will prepare only a single statement of profit and loss account with profit or loss and other comprehensive income presented in two sections so basically single statement of profit or loss account that means you will prepare only one statement of profit or loss account but it will have two section section a will have profit or loss and section b will have other comprehensive income but you will have one statement other comprehensive income in short form i have written regarding that we will learn later on correct so single statement of profit or loss account uh, you know, what we call has been prescribed by India S1 but not by IAS1 because IAS suggested the separate in fact two statements of PNL you can say that way out correct so after this we need to have very important uh, look very important point to look at and that is explicit and unreserved statement of com compliance so what does it what does it mean explicit explicit means very clear self explaining explicit correct which explains itself very clearly of its own explicit just let me settle the as i keep on saying that is the only problem explicit and unreserved A statement of compliance of compliance what does it mean it means suppose I as an entity who is and which is following what we call India's suppose I have prepared my financial statements for the year and I want to tell to the world that I have followed India's while preparing what we call these financial that I need to make a very clear self-explanatory explicit and explicit explicit statement that we have complied with all the accounting standard that means the financial statement of an of an entity must contain explicit and unreserved statement of compliance and if it is not there then we shall construe that entity hasn't complied with the what we call uh, relevant Indian accounting standards. So that is why this is a very, very important term. That in entity whose financial statement comply with the NDS shall made an explicit and unreserved statement of compliance of notes. In the notes, sorry. Correct? So, and if there is, if uh, that is not done, then we shall presume that entity hasn't complied with the NDS. We got this particular, so nothing to write in it. But important point is that if an entity has prepared the financial statement, correct, 
as per NDS, that in the notes, entity must actually clearly mention that we have actually for we, we make a statement that uh, unreserved statement of compliance that we have followed NDS. But if that statement is not carried, then it will be construed that entity hasn't complied with the what we call uh, Indian accounting standards in the AS. So this is very important. Then third, uh, then sorry, next point is presentation of the true and fair view. Presentation presentation of true and fair view. We will see that para 17 actually deals with this particular part of this particular standard if I am not wrong, correct? Uh, explicit and unreserved statement para 16 actually deals and para 17 of India's one deals with what we call presentation of true and fair view. So often and right from the beginning of what we call our journey with respect to accounting education, with respect to commerce education, we have been hearing this particular term but honest and how many among us? you tell me honestly, are really very well aware and well versed with this particular phrase. Could anyone among you let, let me know very honestly, is very well familiar with, of course, if I would ask, but right now, because since it's a makeshift arrangement, I cannot ask and take up the questions also. So the point here is that otherwise on the messages, uh, we can pick up the what we call questions and answers, but here right now it is not possible. But anyway, the point here, which you need to be very aware, aware of, it looks very simple and before I dwell further, let me tell you so often even in the interviews this particular question has been tossed up so many times and I have seen that the prospective candidates are not able to really come out with, a, with an answer which is most satisfying one. Need not require to tell that true and fair view. If some of if we, we are going to be if we are going to put up this particular question to you, most of the answer which we would receive is that of course uh, there must be what the the financial statement must be prepared in a truthful manner, in a fair manner, in an unbiased manner, no nothing like that. Presentation of true and fair view basically means that entity has selected and applied proper accounting policies in accordance with the relevant standards and especially with respect to India's 8 because India's 8 deals with the accounting policies and of course with the changes in accounting estimates and errors. That is the idea. Number one. Number two, when we say true and fair view, number one, now please keep it in your mind because this question so often I have seen asked even in the interviews, correct? So true and fair view means entity has selected the accounting policies basically in the light of NDS 8 because it is NDS 8 which deals right now with the what we call accounting policy besides that what we call estimates and errors correct number one number two while selecting the accounting policies make sure that these are absolutely they present the information with great relevancy and which is reliable which is relevant and which is comparable and which is understandable this is what we mean by true and fair view then of course the accounting policy which we have adopted correct regarding that we need to provide the complete disclosure also this is true and fair view i hope you got this particular point so presentation of true and fair view basically means i can surmise it this way selection of accounting policy selection of accounting policies selection just selection light is glaring in front of the specs that's the problem selection of accounting policies as per india seat as per ind as 8 i've already told you ind as 8 deals with accounting policies changes in accounting policies, estimates and errors, correct? The policies selected should be such that it is able to provide relevant information, correct? 
that being our accounting policies should be such that it is able to provide relevant reliable comparable and understandable information understandable information correct then disclose in order to provide any additional information we may need what we call disclosure aspect so when we say true and fair view that when entity is selecting its policies in the light of india s8 because it is india s8 we speaks a lot regarding what we call guidance and regarding the management etc of what we call affairs of the entity and how an entity should actually select the accounting policies and whatever policies which we have been, uh, selected and applied it should be capable of what we call providing the relevant information as i said and reliable comparable information and which is understandable it should not be vague it should not be clumsy it should not be opaque the transparency should be there and of course and uh, if we need then we should provide additional disclosures uh, so as to comply with the specific requirement of any ndas so this is what we mean by true and fair view you must have noticed actually it looks so easy but sometimes very difficult to actually give answer to i hope actually after having a look over this now you are in a position henceforth to deliver an answer which would satisfy then standard also speaks about what standard also speaks about what we call departure from the requirement of india as well in fact i would like to toss this question to you is it possible for an entity to depart from the what we call india as let me actually write first departure from departure from the just wait departure from the requirement of end as is it possible is it possible it goes without saying that if the entity is preparing its what we call financials as per what we call indias quite obviously entity should follow each and every aspect of indias logically it may appear that we cannot depart from the any requirement of the indias if the indias ask us to actually adopt this sort of what we call course of action we need to go by that however it is possible you may be surprised to know yes it is possible so your answer is that an entity can really depart depart means move away that mean if the entity feels that if we are going to adopt this requirement perhaps we may not be able to present our financial in a true and fair view in a true and fair manner as i said earlier so indias gives a leeway a sort of liberty to the entities if they feel that by adopting the requirement of a particular indias their accounts may not be able to their financial may not be able to unleash the information in a true and fair manner in that particular case they can depart but if they depart then then they will have to provide the reasons for the same reasons and they will have to provide the reasons by way of notes i hope you got this particular point so till up to this particular uh point of time we have learned a bit uh, regarding this particular standard you have seen that even in the beginning itself there are many such points regarding which we were not aware of earlier even though we have had heard a lot about them but so these are the things which we need to know a bit and uh, i have already told you it happens to be a pretty strong standard so in the upcoming session we have lots of things to discuss with you